new scrutinies. Young's fantasies did not end with scrutinies. If he had gone on to prepare a further section for publication, it is likely that he would have edited them in a similar way as new scrutinies adding linking paragraphs and clarifications. While he continued to question his soul, seeking knowledge and understanding from her, she characterized her limitations and his need for her in the following way. I can grasp for you only what you already have but, do, but don't know. The beyond from which I bring knowledge to you is your beyond. I am able to grasp what you have, but you aren't. That's why you need me. The subsequent fantasies circle around the themes already enunciated earlier, but in ever deepening spirals. In the fantasies after scrutinies, one sees a continued further differentiation of Jung's cosmology. And new characters emerge, such as, such as Fane's, Amagvictude, Atmatvictude, Haka, Haka, the Blackbird, a divine, Air of Youth, the Spirit of Gravity, and Wotan. Characters who had appeared earlier return, such as Elijah, Salome, and Philemon. However, in concert with the development of Jung's eye, they too have developed. These entries depict the metamorphosis of the characters and Jung's deepening understanding of their interactions, interrelation in a complex shifting and not entirely consistent genealogy. For example, the figure of Amatvictu went through a number of incarnations as an old man, a bear, an otter, a newt, a serpent, then simultaneously a man and an earth serpent. He was Izudabar and became Philemon, the black magician. Ha was the father of Philemon. Ka was the father of Salome, and also the brother of Buddha. Ka was Philemon's shadow. Philemon further identified himself with Elijah and Kadir and claimed that he would become famous in the form of Jung's emerging psychological concepts, all of these figures would be viewed as aspects of the self. As such, these sections can be seen as forming an experiential core of self. Such, as such, these sections can be seen as forming the experiential core of Jung's understanding of the structure of the self that he explored decades later in chapter 14 of Ion's Contributions of the Symbolisms of the Self. Contributions to the Symbolisms of the Self, 1951. A major theme that Jung was preoccupied with here was finding the right relations to the higher powers the gods and understanding the role of mankind in relation to them. He came to see that it was critical that one did not give oneself over to the gods, but maintained one's human perspective. On March 1st, 1918, his soul informed him that he was necessary, that what was necessary was maintaining simultaneously a respect and disdain for the gods and that this began with respect and disdain for oneself. This was critical not only for humanity, Jung now realized that man would be the, be the mediator in the transformation process of God. It was a cardinal insight, and it is the center of his later work, Answer to Job. Toward the end of his life, in the chapter of Memories, entitled Late Thoughts, he, form, he, formulated, he formulated it as follows. 
That is the meaning of divine service, of the service which man can render to God, that light may emerge from the darkness, that the Creator may become conscious of His creation, and man conscious of himself. That is the goal, or one goal, which fits a man meaningfully into the scheme of creation, and at the same time confers meaning upon it. It is an explanatory myth which has slowly taken shape within me in the course of the decades. One can trace the inception and development of this explanatory myth in the black books. During the same period, Jung continued to distill his fantasies into a psychological vocabulary suitable for a medical scientific audience. Thus we see two parallel movements a continued elaboration and differentiation of his cosmology, accompanied by a process of condensation of his psychology. In his paper on the psychological aspects of the figure of the core, 1941, the observation of products of the unconscious revealed certain regularities, types of situations, and types of figures that frequently recurred. Chief among these were the shadow, the wise old man, the child, the mother, the maiden, and the anima and animus. In this regard, he was attempting to determine precisely where these typ typicalities, typicalities lay. Through establishing the connections between his own material and that of his patients, and the historical record. Viewing and understanding such fantasies in this way, as opposed to regarding them in a disconnected, episodic, serial manner, gave them order and coherence. For Jung, they depicted the narrative of transformation and self-healing that he called the individuation process. On one hand, Jung elaborated his personal visionary icono iconography, his own cosmology and mythology, and encouraged his patients to do likewise. On the other, he developed a hermeneutic system by which to interpret the symbolic language. When read in conjunction with his published psychological works, the Black Books enable one to follow the, the conjoint development of these two languages. During this period, Jung continued to, dis to transcribe the text of Liber Novus into calligraphic volume and to paint in it. However, after the sequence depicting the regeneration of Is Isdubar, the paintings bear no relation at all to the text of Liber Novus, but, of link but are linked to further fantasies in the Black Books. After the 1917 mandala sequence, we have around 21 major images in the calligraphic volume. At the same time, Jung also made a number of related freestanding paintings and carvings. These images are active imaginations in their own right. At times they depict and, defer and refer to characters and the episodes in the concurrent fantasies in books 6 and 7. At other times, they form links in the sequence. So while these paintings are in calligraphic volume of Libra Novice, they directly relate to and accompany the text of books six and seven.